All right, guys, so last week we worked on our one point perspective drawings like this. We learned that everything moves towards the vanishing point and as things get closer to the vanishing point, they get smaller. The horizon line is where the land meets the sky and all of the lines that are diagonal going towards the vanishing point are called converging lines. We also talked about parallel lines. We talked about horizontal, diagonal, and vertical, as well as perpendicular lines. So today we're going to look at some coloring techniques and get these projects finished up with some awesome color. I'm gonna be using colored pencils, but you can do the same things with markers or crayons, whatever you have hanging out at your house. Okay, so to start with coloring, I'm gonna be using colored pencils and I'm going to think about how I want for good craftsmanship, which is neatness and completeness, I want my colors to go from edge to edge, corner to corner, and to completely fill this space. And the way that I can take that to the next level, I'm actually gonna start with the trunk of the tree, as I can think about how even though mediums, mediums is a word for art materials, may, be, um, may not be paint or anything like that, there's some things I can still do with them, like mixing colors and all of that. So notice how I'm holding it a little bit high up. I'm not death gripping it and going crazy. And I'm making small marks that will help me get a nice, smooth color. I'm also thinking about how the direction of my coloring can help show a certain kind of texture. So I'm trying to get some bark type texture on the tree and I want that to be vertical like the tree trunk. And different kinds of marks can make different textures. And you'll see this more in a minute when I add my second layer of color. Because with crayons or colored pencils especially, you can layer colors and get a really nice effect. So I'm just going to get some color in there. So I'm going to pick out a darker brown and I'm going to, with more marks like this to make it show the rough texture of the tree, I'm going to layer in some of that rough bark texture. Do you see how it's starting to bring it to life in a new way and just coloring it with one color and being done? And notice how I am, even though I'm making some kind of crazy rough marks right now, I'm still being careful to stay in the lines. I can think about where there might be some shadows happening. Maybe over here where they meet, there might be a shadow, so I can make that a little bit darker. Just like that. I'm going to do the same thing. Oh, it's fall, so I'm going to do fall colors. I'm going to do the same thing when I go to color the leaves. But I can think about how different kinds of marks make different textures. So to get a kind of um, ruffly leaf texture, I'm actually going to use circle marks. But you might have a different kind of mark that you want to do. That's totally fine. And I'm going to just show you on this one... I can get all the different kinds of fall colors. Because you see how there's still some white paper coming through? I'm just going to keep layering colors, and that's going to give me a richer and more complete piece of artwork. you can mix all sorts of colors, especially with colored pencils or crayons, they're very forgiving. So you can just keep layering colors until you get something that looks right to you. You can always use the color wheel and look at that. Um. about that. So again, if I want to get a nice, 
clean color in. Notice how I'm making really small. I'm not going like this. I'm just going nice and small. I'm not death gripping my pencil. I have it just kind of laying in between my fingers. Because if you death grip it, you won't last very long. You're going to get tired. But if you hold your pencil nice and light, but make small marks and just work slowly and be patient, you're going to get a really nice craftsmanship color in. So going through, making sure that I'm not leaving any white space, going all the way to the edge of each shape. Sometimes it helps to trace the inside edge of the shape that you're filling in like this. Kind of give yourself more of a buffer. You can think about too, if you're having a hard time filling in all your white space, going in opposite directions. Those perpendicular lines we talked about, it's called cross hatching too. You just go one direction and then go the other direction. All right, so I'm gonna keep coloring this. I'm gonna time lapse the video and you can color your masterpiece. Alright guys, so as you can see, I have finished coloring my One Point Perspective landscape. You can see um, in the time lapse how I layered lots of different colors. You might have also noticed that when I felt like I needed to make my tree pop out more or I wanted certain things to stand out, I went back in with a darker color and I blended a little bit more of the darker color around the edges and that helped things pop out a little bit more. You may also have noticed um, that I held my pencil different ways depending on the kind of mark I wanted to make. If I wanted to make a really distinct mark or more of a dark line, I would hold my pencil more up and down. If I was trying to fill a large space of area very lightly so I could layer lots of colors, I was holding it far back and to the side. And you're going to notice how in the large areas I went really big and fast, but I tried to keep the small things, the space around that more open, and I went back in and added that later. Holding my pencil at, a, at the side helps make sure that there's no hard line so that everything blends really nicely. It's kind of like painting with pencils and that's how you do it. And that kind of thing takes practice. So just keep practicing and you're going to be so amazed at what you're capable of doing. I hope you guys had fun with this. Go hang it up somewhere fun in your house or apartment. Um, snap a picture of it and send it to me um, either through turning it in on Canvas or just attaching it to an email. Um, and I hope that you're really proud of what you make. Next week, we're going to look at a little bit more of an advanced one-point perspective thing, which is how to draw a building in one-point perspective. And the week after that, we'll be doing an optical illusion also using one-point perspective. Hope you had fun. Bye.